Hi everyone, welcome to the sixth lesson for topic 3.1 by Variant Data Analysis. This is also the second lesson which we discuss on numerical data. So in the previous lesson, we have learned uh, that we use two column table or two row table to display the data in numerical variable. Then after that, we learned that how to draw a scatter plot that is a graphical representation for the numerical data. So from the scatter plot, we are going to identify and also describe the association. So we learn through uh, three areas, right? The term, sorry, the form, and then the direction, and also the strength. And last but not least, we have uh, how to find the correlation coefficient, right? So these are the things that we learned in the previous lesson. So now for today's session, we're going to look at the part where how to fit a linear model to a numerical data. So I hope that you still remember what is that meant by linear model because you've seen, uh, you have seen this word when we describe the scatter plot in terms of its form. So we have linear, non-linear, and then no relationship, right? So linear force, linear form as if the numerical data is best represented by using a straight line. Okay, so that's the main focus of our today's lesson. So you can see that 3.8.9 and 3.1.9 is something that we have did previously already because we need to identify the EV and the RV, then only we can draw the scatter plot, right? So we have discussed this part and also how to use the scatter plot to identify the nature of the relationship. So something new for today's session is that how are we going to model the linear relationship by fitting a least square line? So this is something that is new to you. So don't worry, we are going to discuss and explain it together in the notes later. Then after that, after we have this least square line, then actually is fitted by using a least square equation. So from the equation, we have the intercept and the slope. So we are going to learn how to interpret this as well. Okay, so basically we are going to learn like what's the equation of the regression line and it's highly, it's highly related to uh, the straight line equation that you have learned previously. So just to give you an idea how is this whole lesson is going to be conducted. So the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to do the revision on a part on straight line equation because some of you are I mean, you did learn from year 11 as well, right? But some of you didn't. So I think might as well we just do the revision together on straight line equation y equals mx plus c. So that will be helpful for your further understanding when we talk about the least square line later. Then the second part, we are just going to do a very quick recap on what we learned previously. Then we'll move on to the part where to discuss what is that meant by the least square line. Okay? Then lastly, we will have one example that we try to put in all the things that we have learned so far in the two lessons into one example. Then we try to make a revision on everything. Okay, so that's basically how this lesson is going to carry uh, is going to be carried out. Alright, so let's start with the first part, which we do some revision for the straight line equation. Alright, so you can turn to the last page of your handout. So this is where the revision part is on. Then after that, we'll go back to the previous part, which we continue to discuss the bivariate data. Okay, so uh, for straight line equation, I guess I and I hope majority of you still remember that that is a general equation, which is y equals to mx plus c that we always use. So the m that we have here actually represent the gradient, right? So what is gradient actually? So from the value of the gradient, we can actually find out what is the direction of the straight line. So uh, if let's say it's a positive one, then how's the direction? If let's say it's a negative one, then how's the direction? And the gradient also tell, tell us how steep the line is. Okay, so it tells us that the steepness of the line. All right, so don't worry, later we are, we are going to use these two examples to show you how it's going to look like. Then after that, the C here represents the y-intercept, okay? So which means if, let's say, I were to draw a graph, right, then y-intercept is what is the number that the line actually passed through the y-axis here. So this place is called as the y-intercept. So in, in other words, it also indicate what is the y-value when the x is actually zero, okay? Because you can see that from the graph here, right? On the y-axis, the x is actually zero. So I want to see when the x is zero, what is my y? And this y value is just my y-intercept. So when we try to do y-intercept, right? Then it's the same thing where you try to imagine when we substitute x equals to zero. 
So we will get y equal to m, then x is 0, right, then plus c. So m multiply 0, then you get 0, 0 plus c, this is how you get y equals to c. So that's why y intercept is basically the y value when x is 0, then you get y equals to c. Okay, so we are going to look at these two examples to show you that uh, what is that indicated by the gradient and also the y intercept here. Okay, so this is how do we draw a line from the equation. So we have these two different equations here. So uh, when you want to draw a straight line, right, we will need at least two pair of coordinates. So which means we need two points, then only we can connect a line, right? Because you see, if let's say I only have one pair, one point, so what happened here is that I can draw a straight line like this, I can draw it like this, I can draw it like this. And all this line actually give me a different thickness. So that's why I actually couldn't draw a line by using one point only. So I need to have at least two points, then when I try to connect them, then this is how I get to my straight line. Okay? So, but uh, normally I encourage you, if let's say you need to draw a line, right, then uh, maybe you can draw up to three pairs because that's good for your reference and for your checking. So uh, yeah, the idea is that if let's say I plot this correctly, then this point is wrong. But then if let's say I have the third point right, then the third point look like this, then I will able to know that if this three point cannot form a straight line, then I know that one of the point that's something wrong already. So if let's say I didn't draw the third point right, then I'll just connect these two together and it's actually one of the point is wrong. So that's why if let's say you have three pairs of coordinate, then it will be good for your checking. Okay, so let's try to see how do we do that exactly. So there are two equations here. The first one is we are going to draw the uh, line for y equals to 2x minus 3. Okay, so how are we going to draw the line? So remember that as long as the point is on the straight line, it's going to give you the coordinate that fits the rule. So that's why no matter which point that you are using at the end you are still getting the same answer okay so that's why we can just use some simple uh, answer here maybe we can do x equals to 0 x equals to 2 and x equals to 4 okay then how are we going to get the y value we are just going to substitute the x okay so the y here is 2 multiply 0 minus 3 okay so you see i'm just substituting my 0 into this equation to get my y so 2 multiply 0 minus 3 that is going to give me negative 3. So I have my first point is when x is 0, y is negative 3. So x is 0. So this is the axis for y, then this is the axis for x, right? Okay, so when x equals to 0, which is here, the y is negative 3. So I have one point which is here. Okay, then continue to do the same thing. Now my x is 2, and what is my y? It's going to be 2 times 2 then multiply 3, so 4, sorry, minus 3, so 4 minus 3 is going to give me 1. So my second point here is when x equals to 2, y is 1. So x is 2, then y is 1, so that's why the point is here. So we'll use the third point to actually check whether these two uh, coordinate is correct or not. So the same thing, substitute 4 into the position of x. So 2 times 4, minus 3. So we have 8 minus 3 and that gives us 5. Okay, so the last point that we have here is when uh, x equals to 4, y equals to 5. So it's like this. Okay, so by having this, now we can draw a line. Okay, so you can see that you can use a ruler to join the point together. So yeah, I'm just going to use freehand. Please use ruler in your own set or handout. Yeah, so yeah, the graph will actually look like this. Okay, so I hope that you get the same thing. Okay, so later we are going to come back to talk about the intercept. Okay, so now let's try to draw a second graph here. So y equals to negative x plus 2. So we are just going to use the simple value as well. Okay, so you can just try it out. If let's say you are using 1, 3, 5 and see whether you get the same number or not. Okay, that's going to give you a straight line. Because the idea is you can imagine when I substitute 1, right, then I will actually get 3. So no matter I'm using this point or I'm using this point, so at the end, I'm just going to use the same line to connect them. So no matter what's the value that you substitute for your x, at the end, you are just going to get the same straight line as well. Okay, so that's the idea. So if let's say you want to just try it out, right? So I will draw for 0, 2, 4. 
then maybe you can try it out to draw 1, 3, 5. Then after that, you compare and see whether we have the same line or not. Okay, so let's substitute 0. So negative 0 plus 2, and that gives us 2. Then for this part, negative 2 plus 2, that's 0. Negative 4 plus 2, and that is negative 2. Okay, so now let's plot the line. Sorry, plot the point. So when x equals to 0, then y is 2. So that's why the point is here. Y x equals to 0, y is 2. So it's here. Okay, then the next one we have when x is 2, y is 0. When x is 4, then y is negative 2. Okay, so now same thing. We try to connect the point together. Again, please use your ruler, yeah? Okay. Sorry, I think it's a bit ugly. Let me try to do it again. Uh, yeah. Alright, okay. So yeah, you can see if let's say you are using 1, 3, 5, then the number that you are getting for your y is like 1, then negative 1, and negative 3. And definitely you'll get the exactly same line as well. Okay, so now let's try to look at this uh, two equation, right? We have y equals to 2x minus 3. So when we compare to the equation of y equals to mx plus c, so you can see that y and y is the same, x and x is the same. So which means that the gradient that we have here is basically 2. Then after that, the c that we have here is represented by negative 3, right? So c equals to negative 3. So from this graph, then you can actually realize that c equals to negative 3 is actually proved by this point. So you see, this is the point for y-intercept, right? It's where the line intercepts with your y-axis. So that's why this is the point for negative 3. Okay, so I hope that you can get the idea what is the M and the C mean. Okay, so M is the gradient, right? So gradient show you the direction. So what is that exactly meant by 2? So it's actually mean that when there is 1 increase in X, right? So X increase 1. And that means that Y will actually increase 2. Okay, so the idea is like this. So you can try to check it on. So by using any point, okay, so maybe it's here. So you can see that from this point up to this point, when your x increases 1, what happened to your y until this point, right? So your x increases 1, your y actually increases 1, 2. So that's why the gradient is 2. So the steepness actually tells us that when x increases for one unit, then how much y increases. So since it's a straight line, right, so the gradient is going to be the same throughout all the points. So you can see if I try to compare here. So from here to here is one unit, right? So when it's one unit increase in x value, that's two unit increase in y value. Okay, so that's why you see it's just the same thing. Let me try to just draw it with a straight line. All right, so this is like what? increase for one unit then y increase for two units so this is what is that meant by two and positive two which means when x increase y also increase so now let's try to look at this so we have y equals to negative x plus two so same thing when we try to compare with y equals to mx plus c okay so what's our m our m is going to equal to negative one am i right so m equals to negative 1. So it actually tells us that when x increase for 1, so uh, we always try to refer to the explanatory variable increase 1, uh, so which means x increase 1. Then for this one, it's negative 1, so which means y will actually decrease for 1 unit. So you can see it's proved by your graph as well. You can see, right, if let's say there's an increase in the x uh, variable, so that's one unit increase in the x variable, the x, the y variable actually decreasing one. So it's the same thing as well. We're trying to look at this point. So when the x increase for one unit, the y will decrease for one unit. So you can see the difference between the gradient here and the gradient here. So we always try to use like a right angle triangle to actually draw that. So when you try to look at this, so this is like a right angle triangle as well, but it's just that when your x increase, your y decrease. So that actually proved by your negative value of gradient. After that, same thing, 
the y-intercept is here, right, where the straight line intersect with your y-axis. So that's why the c here is 2. So you try to look at this one. So you can see the c is actually at 2 as well. Okay, so I hope that you can get the whole idea how it's like. I mean, how do you read y equals to mx plus c? Then how do you uh, understand it in terms of a graph? Okay, because that's very impo important when we move on to bivariate data analysis. Okay, so this is some general notes for you. So the gradient tells us how much the value of y changes for every one unit change in x. So normally we talk about when x increases for one unit, then what happened to y? La? Okay, that's the idea. So the sign indicates the direction of the relationship. So from the two examples just now, we can see that when the gradient is positive, it actually means that when x increases, y will also increase. If the gradient is negative, right, then which means that when x increases, the y actually decreases. All right. Okay, so the other thing is the magnitude. So the magnitude, which means when we try to look at the M, right, except looking at the sign, by looking at the number, it tells us about the steepness. So, uh, yeah, this is for your information. That's not so important compared to this part. So the larger the value, the steeper the line is. So which means if I were to compare this line, this line, and this line. So the last line here is going to have the largest uh, gradient because this line is the steepest line that we have when we try to compare to like this four. Okay, so this line is like going up much more steeper after that. Okay, so that's why if let's say the line is more steeper then which means the gradient is larger. Okay, but obviously we are talking about the value, yeah, the magnitude only. So which means the positive negative will depends on what's the direction of the relationship. So what happened to y when your x increases? Okay, so this is some uh, thing for you is that every point lying on the straight line will have the coordinates that fits the rule. So it's like what I mentioned just now. So which means if let's say we were to draw a straight line, if you are using a different pair of x and y, so don't worry about that as long as they are by, uh, sorry, as long as they are by, uh, you are getting them by using the same equation that will eventually just give you the same graph. So because you can imagine that's like unlimited points on this straight line if I were to extend it. So that's why there's like a lot of points that you are free to use. Okay, so don't worry if let's say you get a different, you use a different point than your friend, but at the end, the line that you are getting is just the same. Okay. So uh, if let's say the points that's not on the line, right, is not going to fit the rule. So for example, if let's say I were to say this point, so you can see that this point is like 5, negative 2. So when you substitute into the equation, right, you cannot actually get that correct because you see, if let's say 5, let me use the other color. So uh, this part you don't need to write in your notes, that's fine. Okay, so you can see the y is negative 2, right? So the, the other side is 2x minus 3. So when we substitute x inside, then you see you are getting 7. So that's why y is, you get y is, so from the point, y is negative 2. But when I substitute into the equation, right, I should actually get y equals to 7. So you see, this is why the negative 2 is definitely not equal to 7, right? So that's why this point is not on the line. Okay, so which means if you use all the other points that are out of the straight line to fit into this equation, you wouldn't be able to get a correct answer. Okay, so that's basically the idea for the straight line equation. So what's important here is I hope that you can understand the idea of gradient and the intercept. So because you are going to use this knowledge to help you to interpret the linear equation uh, later. Alright, so let's move on and go back to the part where we discuss about bivariate data analysis. Alright, a quick recap on the last lesson. So we know that for bivariate numerical data, we try to use scatter plot to represent the data in a graphical approach, right? Okay, so from the scatter plot, we also study how to interpret it for the set of data in terms of the form the direction and also the strength. Okay, so I hope that you still remember how to read this, like linear, non-linear, non, -linear, non uh, no relationship, 
positive direction, negative direction, and the last one is the strength. So either it's a strong one, it's a moderate one, or it's a weak one, or even like a perfect one, or like a no uh, relationship one. Okay, so uh, the form, the direction, and strength. So when we try to look at the graph, it's by observation. So this observation can always be supported by the calculation of the coefficient that we learned previously, which is called as the correlation coefficient. Okay, so that's pretty much what we discussed in the last lesson. Okay, so now, right, once we uh, determine whether the two numerical variables having an association or not, then we can try to fit in the straight line equation. So which means that by looking at the form and, of course, the strength, so the form, you know, we have linear, non-linear, and no relationship. So if let's say the data is like non-linear and no relationship, then normally we are not, I mean, uh, fitting a straight line model will not be appropriate, okay? So in this case, the most of the majority of the cases that we will be looking at is the form of linear, okay? And it will be good if let's say the strength is a very strong one. So uh, why do we need that is that when we try to fit that into a regression model, right, then it will actually create a model Then by using the equation, we are able to actually make prediction. So uh, for example, this is like the problem that we did previously, right, like uh, the exam marks can explain the difference in, sorry, the entry test marks can explain the difference in the exam marks. Right, so which means that by having the model, by having the equation of the straight line, I can actually use it to predict if let's say I have someone that who score 20 only in my entry test mark, then I can actually by using the model to help me to predict what's the exam marks that this person is going to get. Okay, so that's the idea of why do we need to fit the linear model into the data. Okay, so don't worry about that. You'll realize that you heard a lot of things like what least square line, then regression lines, all kind of stuff. So yeah, you'll, we will actually look at it together. Okay, so now let's try to look at this example that we have. Okay, so I try to put in here is like the problem. So uh, I'm trying to use this to explain to you why do we need the uh, regression model. Then the other thing is we're going to use this for our example later as well. So you do not need to draw the line with me for now, especially if you are using your pen, yeah, because later we are going to do a proper one. Okay, so now, right, the problem goes like this. So you can imagine that definitely by looking at this diagram, right, I can actually draw a straight line. Am I right? So which means that if I were to uh, predict what's the marks that I have, so like the example that I... Uh, mentioned just now, if the entry test marks is 20, then I want to guess what's the uh, exam marks. So what I can do is I can just draw a straight line. Am I right? Then after that, I try to predict what's the marks over here. Okay, so now what's the problem with the straight line here? So I want you to try to imagine if you are the one that's going to draw this straight line, what uh, how's the line that you are going to put? I mean, what's the thing that you will be think of when you want to draw a line? Okay, so you can spend like three seconds to think about that. Okay, so let me try to see. What happened here is that there will be different thoughts for every one of you. The first one is I want to find a straight line that maybe majority of the point can pass through. So for example, if I were to pass through I mean, I didn't use the ruler, but yeah, maybe I can pass through something like this. So I can pass through like majority of the points. So maybe that's my concern. So maybe the first one is, am I going to find out a line that passes through majority of the point? Then maybe some of you will have the other idea is, can I try to get a line that is in the middle of every line? So maybe I didn't pass through as much of the point, but this line is at the middle of every point here. Is that okay? I think that's, that works as well, right? So which means that this will be a good line that represents all the data because the line is just nice in the middle. Okay, then maybe some of you think that I should have uh, the one and the upper part and the lower part is roughly the same. So which means maybe I try to draw a line that looks like this. 
Yeah. So you see, I have like two or uh, three points at the bottom, then I have like four points at the top. So it's like balance up. So you can see, right, by using this different of thoughts, you are actually going to draw a different line of a uh, different line for this model based on your own assumption, based on your own observation and how do and how you think the line should look like, right? So that's why we need a model that actually helps us to calculate what's the best line that can fit into this data. So that's why we need this line, which is called as the least square line. Okay, so we are going to move into the part. Okay, so fitting least square regression line. So we model a linear relationship by fitting a least square regression. So I'm just going to... Uh, ask you to repeat this because it's something that's new to you. So least square regression line. So this line can be also called as the line of best fit. It can also be called as the regression line. Line of best fit, I'm sorry. Line of best fit. Yeah, so which means the line that best fit all the data lines, so that's why it's called as line of best fit, regression line, or the least square line. Okay, so no matter which term that you are, you see in the textbook or different res reference book, they actually refer to the same thing. Okay, so it's just basically refer to this line last. So yeah, you must remember the different name here because to avoid that maybe in the exercise or in the exam, they try to use one of it, then you're not sure what is that mean, okay? So remember that line of best fit, regression line or least square line is basically the same line that we are referring to, okay? So this line is the linear fit that minimizes the sum of the square of the vertical distance between the line at each point. So which means that that's a formula that actually the mathematician used to calculate this, which I want to find out where is the point that I can actually draw so that the distance between all these points to the line is the minimum one after I find. So why do we need to use the sum of the square is that you can see that's like negative distance, that's like positive distance. We are going to learn this more in residual, so don't worry about that. And you are not going to calculate it by using formula as well calculator is going to do that for you okay so the idea is you just need to remember that the uh, line of best fit is the line that fits the best for the data here so this is the line that we use to fit the linear model then after that uh, the line is actually obtained by minimizing the sum of the square of the vertical distance that you have so even if you don't remember this that's Fine as well so we are just going to apply that so how do they get that is actually not important to us okay so uh, I actually write down here so how do you determine the equation is actually from your TI inspire okay so that's why you are not going to do any calculation for that all right so you are just going to know how to do uh, how to press your calculator and how to read the value in your calculator only okay so the same thing, because of this line of best fit, right, is always be a straight line. So that's why just now we learned that the equation of the straight line is y equals to mx plus c. So that's why the same thing that we have here is that the general form of a linear regression line is just equals to y equals to mx plus c. Okay, don't worry about this part first. So you can see there's a y cap here. So the cap here actually means that the predicted y so the idea is we want to differentiate the idea where, okay, you can see, right, all this point is our actual value. So it's like the data that we get from the table. So you have, for example, this is like your x1 and then y1, your x1, x2, then y2, and so on. So that's why this is like the value for x and y. So this y without cap. So uh, the y that we get from this line is going to be the y that we predicted. So, okay, let me give you an example. At this point, right, maybe the explanatory variable here is 5, and then maybe this is, for example, 12. Okay, then you can see that after I fit in the line, right, actually when x equals to 5, the y is predicted to be at this point. Am I right? Because when x equals to 5, 
this is what my x is. So maybe it's 10. So that's why by looking at this time, this is my exact value, my actual value that I got from my table that uh that I got from my data. But then the 10 here is the predicted y that I get from this regression line. So that's why we try to differentiate that and we use y cap. So uh, don't worry so much about that first. We're going to look at that in much more detail when we talk about residual plot. So for now, you can just remember it's just like y equals to mx plus c. Okay, so where when we look at bivariate data, so the x always represent the explanatory variable, am I right? So that's why the y equals to mx plus c, the x actually represent the explanatory variable. Okay, then after that, uh, on the other hand, then we have y is just the response variable. So similarly, we have the m or c. So you can see that I try to write down both because in your calculator, like what I showed you last time, that's two approach. Either you can write mx plus c or a plus bx. But the idea is just the same. For example, if let's say you have a line that's y equal to 2x plus c, so the m is 2, then the c is 3. So it's the same thing if I try to write it in another way, which is 3 plus 2x, that's just going to be the same. So what is important here is you need to remember that the number before the x is your gradient. Okay, it's not because of where is the place. I mean, for example, the 2 now is at the front, but now the 2 is at the back. So you cannot remember which is the front, which is the back, but you need to remember that the number before your x is your gradient. Then the number without x is your y-intercept. Okay, so that's why by looking at this, so you can see that for this equation, m is the one that in front of x. y is the, for this one, the b is the one that in front of x. Okay, so that's why the m or b represent the gradient. Then you can see that for the c here, and the a here is the one that without any connection with x. So this is the number that represents the y-intercept. Okay, so something that I try to write in here is later we are going to do an example together. So remember that when we try to write the equation, we will always write in the context of the question rather than using x and y. So for example, if let's say our explanatory variable now is our height, then the response variable is the weight. So meaning when we try to write this, then it's supposedly to be weight equals to m multiplied the height plus c. So that's the idea. Okay, so before we move into the example, let's try to do a last part. So how do we interpret the gradient? So this is something that you might need to, you can actually remember because every time when you try to write this, it's just going to be the same sentence that you, are, you will be using. But uh, like what I say, try to understand it so you do not need to memorize it, but it's that you understand it already, so every time you're just going to write the same thing. So for the gradient, like what we mentioned in y equals to mx plus c, so the sign of the gradient indicate the direction of the linear relationship. Okay, for one unit increase, so just now we talked about uh, what is the change in y when there is one unit increase in x, right? So it's the same thing here. For every one unit increase in the explanatory variable, the response variable, right? Because explanatory variable goes first. So that's why, uh, and it's on the x axis. So we always look at when there's one unit increase in explanatory variable. So the response variable, there will be two things that will happen. Either it will increase or either it will just decrease okay so by how many units and that's the gradient that you put in so the m units meaning the gradient so for example just now when the gradient is two which means when x increases for one unit then y increases for two units so it's the same idea here but we are just not going to talk about x and y we are going to talk about the ev and the rv so same thing here to interpret the y intercept is that when the explanatory variable which means the x just now, when is explanatory variable, is zero unit, the response variable is going to be equal to the y-intercept, which is the c. Okay, so I hope that that clarifies. Okay, so now 
we are going to look at the example that we have for the problem just now before we move into the part where we discuss for the coefficient of determination. So let's try to look at this thing again. Okay, so uh, please get yourself your calculator and we are going to use the calculator to help us to find the regression line equation. Okay, so I hope that by now you are very familiar with all the operation, like how are you going to uh, construct a scatter plot, then how do you uh, find your R, okay? Because we are just going to use the same thing, but just reading the different value from the approach that we have. Okay, so now I'm going to show you two approach that you can uh, find your uh, linear regression equation from. Okay, so let's try to go to your calculator. So let's try to key in the value. So uh, I'll just add in one new page, okay? So yeah, just go to the page where you need to add in a new list and spreadsheet, okay? So now let's key in the data that we have here. So I hope that I don't need to explain this anymore. Yeah, so I'm just going to put in entry and then exam. Okay, so let's key in all the data that we have here in pair. So yeah, you can just you know, you to look at my screen here. So you can just put in all your data in your calculator first. Okay, so I'm just going to put everything like vertically. 5, 30, 25, 60, 70, 80, 90. Okay, so that's going to be 10 value. 74, 45, 54, 77, 36, 29, 58. 70, 74, 82. Okay, so please uh, again make sure that you check through all your value before you proceed to any analysis. Okay, so because that's going to be like every time that will be like careless mistake from the students. So that's actually very important because once your raw data is wrong, then all the analysis that you did will be wrong as well. Okay, so let me show you the first approach first. Okay, so do you still remember how do we find out the R value? Yeah, that's not hard, right? So we are just going to add in, go to the menu, statistic, stat calculation, then linear regression. So it's the same thing like what I said, it's basically both fine if let's say you are using number 3 or number 4. It's just that to make sure that you are not confusing with uh, which one is your gradient and which one is your y-intercept. So like what I mentioned last, so gradient is the number that before the variable x and the one that without any variable is normally your y-intercept. So it's just going to be the same thing, but just make sure that if you are using this one, then later when you are writing the, writing the equation, you make sure you write in y equals to mx plus c. Then if you are, let's say you are using this one, then it's going to be a plus bx, okay? So let's try to use the number 3 first maybe. So we use the normal one mx plus b. So you just press it. Then after that, let's key in our x list. So please remember that it's very important for you to type in your uh, the variable that you assign. Yeah? So you cannot forget what you type in your page or please and spreadsheet. So uh, if not, then you will have an error when you try to carry out the analysis. So just tap everything. Okay, so I'm just going to put my result at the column D. Okay, so okay, then uh, I will see this. Okay, so now, right, previously we only talk about the value of R. And I said that today we'll be looking at the other value, right? So you can see this is residual. We are going to only discuss it in the next week. Okay, so for today, we are going to look at uh, all the others. So you can see these words here, R-E-G-E-Q-N. So R-E-G stands for regression. EQN stands for equation. So this is basically the linear regression line equation that we want. So how are we going to write it? So like what I say, it will be depending on whether you are choosing AX plus B, or sorry, whether you are choosing A plus BX or MX plus B. So if let's say I'm choosing MX plus B, so the way that I should be writing, it should be Y equals to, this is my M, X, then plus B. Okay, so I hope that you get what I mean here. So uh, for this question, I think we can write up to three decimal place maybe. So 0 0.788. So y equal to, let's try to write y first, then after that we change it from there. So y equal to, what's the value again? So we have 0 0.788. Okay, so 0 0.788x and then plus 
So you just follow this one. Basically, you are just writing down your m here, then x, then plus b. So your b is the value here. So 12.214. Okay, so 12.214. Is that all right? Okay, so now remember that's the instruction in my handout that I say that do not use x and y. So always answer it referring to the context of the question. So in this question, what is our y here? What's our response variable? It's our SM max, right? So that's why this is supposed to be SM max. Okay, and then equal to 0 0.788, then entry. So I'm just writing down entry marks. Lah. Then after that, plus 12.214. So if let's say in some question, they will actually give you like the, if let's say this is like test T, then after that this is E. So we can actually you just use the uh, acronym here to actually have us to write. So which means when we try to answer it, then it can be written as E. Okay, that's as I mark equal to 0 0.788, then our X is the test marks, then plus 12.214. Okay, so it will be depending on the question. If let's say you scare this part, then you can just write down a multiply here, but that doesn't matter. That basically means multiplication. Okay, so now I'm just going to show you a different thing if let's say you are using the other one. Okay, so I'm just going to show you that that's going to give you the exactly same answer as well. So let's try to do that again. Menu, that, oh, sorry, statistic, stat calculation. So now we try to do A plus BX. So when you're pressing this, right? So same thing, entry, then exam. Okay, so just move on. So the first result, maybe I can do result G, then okay. So now let's try to imagine, uh, let's try to compare. So you see the value here is basically the same. The only thing is you see the A now become, is our B here. Then after that, my M here become the B. But when you try to write it right, if let's say you were to write this, then this would become y equals to 12.214 plus, referring to this, right? So a plus bx. So that's why it will become y equal to 12.214 plus 0.788x. Then isn't it it's the same thing when we try to write y equals to 7 point, uh, 0.788x plus 12.214? So you see, it's basically the same thing, but it's just that instead of writing this, they are just writing down the 12.214 in front. Then after that, writing down the gradient, I mean the part with gradient and variable at the back. Okay, but basically it's the same thing. Like when we say 1 plus 2 and 2 plus 1 is basically the same. Okay, so just make sure that you are just writing in a correct sequence according to what's the analysis that you put in. If you try to do A plus BX, then make sure that you're substituting a in front, then B in front of your X log. If you are using MX plus B, make sure that you sub your M in front of X, then your B. Then other than that, all your value will just be the same. You can look at your R square and your R, yeah, everything is just the same. Okay, so this is the first approach that we can just use the linear regression analysis here to help us to get the, uh, to get the line of equation. The other one that we can try to do is that but uh, if let's say you were to ask me the comparison like which one is easier then i will always say that this is easier because normally when you try to do analysis then there will be a question that you need to find out the r as well so that's why by just carry out linear regression you basically get uh, mostly all your data that you need already the other alternative that you can try to do is let's go back so control go to, uh oops i'm sorry it's just here yeah so this is a table, right? You still remember how to construct your scatter plot? Yeah, so that's the second alternative. So let's try to draw a scatter plot. Sorry for that. Okay, so uh go to plus another page, right? Then data and statistic. Okay, then just key in your value here. So this is your entry, it's your EV, RV is our exam. So after you draw this, then last time we talked about how to fit the least square line, right? So you just go to the menu. Then after that, you just go to the analyze. Okay, and then add on the regression line, right? So show linear. 
So it's the same thing, no matter it's one or two, it's just going to be the same thing. So you just press it, then you will see the straight line equation that we get just now. It's just the same. Okay, 0.788x plus 12.214. But something that is uh, pretty interesting about this is you just remember that I guess if let's say you have a negative x in the uh, negative y intercept, they will write like plus and minus. But uh, that doesn't matter much lah, because you know that plus minus then uh, end up it should be equals to minus, right? It's like positive, negative, then you should get negative. So it's the same thing, but they are they 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 will be always using plus in the middle. Then if let's say it's a negative value, then they will write plus then minus. Okay, then but you know that plus minus equals to minus, then that's basically fine. So it depends on you. There are the two approach that you can always try to use. So no matter which one, it will just give you the same answer. Depends on your own preference. Okay, so now after we find out the regression line, so my question is. How are we going to draw this line? So this go back to the y equals to mx plus c that we draw in the revision. So when you want to draw a straight line, you will need at least two points, right? So that's why we are just going to do the same thing here. So for example, so maybe we can just use this is the test. This is the e. Okay, so you can just pick randomly the points that you want. So maybe I will just pick when the test mark is equal to zero. Okay. So I'm just going to use your normal calculator to substitute in 0. So meaning E is equal to 0 0.788 times 0 plus 12.214. Okay, so from here, then I can get 12.214. So this is my first point. After that, I can move on. So you can choose any point that you like. So even uh, 20 also can. So T equal to 20. So we try to substitute 20 in the place of t, sorry, in the place of t, yeah, 20 plus 12.214, okay? So let's substitute by using our calculator, your normal calculator. So in your real exam, you'll be bringing two of your calculator in the exam hall as well because... Uh, for this time of easy calculation, it will be still easy by using your normal scientific calculator. So same thing, we try to use one more point as our reference as well. Maybe you can do the last point, 100. Okay, so E is equal to 0 0.788 times 100 plus 12.214. Okay, so that will give us 78.8 plus 12.214. And that is 91.014. So from here, then we can have three points ready. So now we can try to draw. So like what I say, definitely by looking at this one, you know that you can't get an exact value. So we can just try to estimate where the point is. So when t equals to 0, or uh, e is 12. So 10 is here. 12 is like slightly a little bit higher than that. Okay. Then after that, when t is 20, is 28. It's around 28, so 20, 28 is sharply here. Okay, then after that, oh, sorry. I think for this part, we can try to use a cross. So to indicate that it's not the data point, it's the point that we use to draw the line. So uh, 12 point, so it's somewhere here. Then after that, 20, 28 is somewhere here. Okay, then we can try to draw the last one. When t is 100, then it's 91.014. Okay, so it's somewhere here. So by using a ruler, you should be able to get one straight line. Okay, so I'm not going to draw here, but uh, please try to draw it in your handout. So I'm just going to skip the step and just show you the outcome. Okay, so this is how the line is looked like. So you can definitely see that it fits into the condition where it's like in the middle. Then the uh, points that you have above and below is like roughly the same. So this is like the best line that we have. Okay, make sure when you try to draw the line, it passes through the three points. And you can always, uh, by after you draw this, you can always use your calculator to help you to see whether your answer is correct or not. Okay, so you can see that when you try to compare to this, so I guess it's pretty similar. So I can't put them into the same page, but yeah, so you can definitely see that it's roughly the same. So you can see this point is like a little bit lower. Then this point is just nice in the middle. Then this two point is slightly higher. Then the point is lower here. 
After that, when we move on, we have two higher and then two lower. So it's the same thing by using calculators, two higher, two lower. Okay, so you can roughly see the same pattern by using your calculator as well and make sure that they should be the same. Okay, and uh, of course, I just want to mention here is that if let's say the question want you to draw right, you can't actually look at the graph and then just roughly draw. So make sure that you are going to get at least two points then plot the two points, then you just draw the straight line by connecting the two points together. And uh, your calculator that show you the regression line is for your check only. Okay, see, so let's try to like write down some uh, interpretation so you uh, will be able to actually refer to the sentence that we have here. Okay, so which means that for each of the question, you are just going to change like what's the unit, what's the EV, and whether it's increase or decrease. Then for the y-intercept, it's the same thing. Find out what's your EV, what's your RV, then you change accordingly. So now let's try to look at the gradient first. So we are going to write something similar like this. If you are using like printing version, then you can just uh, put it on your side for your reference. Okay. So for this part, then what is your gradient here? Let me try to use a different color. So your gradient here is 0 0.788, right? So it's correct that by looking at this graph, you know that when your x increases, your y increases as well. So having a positive gradient is a logical answer. So how do we interpret this 0 0.788? Is that for every... So what is the one unit in this question? The unit here is the marks, right? So it's like for every one mark increase, in the explanatory variable is entry test mark so for every one mark increase in the entry test mark so the gradient tells us how many or uh, how much change in the response variable so that's why the response variable is the SM mark so the SM marks increase or decrease in this case yeah it's increasing right and this is shown by a positive gradient as well so the SM mark increases by the value of the gradient, 0 0.788 marks. Okay, so this is how you interpret the uh, gradient. Then after that, the second part is the intercept here. So what does this mean? This means that when your entry test is 0 marks, the SM marks is 12.214. Okay, so when the EV here is entry test marks, Test marks is zero. You can write zero marks as well. Then the SM marks is 12.214. Okay, so this is the idea how do you interpret. So basically, you are just using the same uh, structure of the sentence. But then the only thing difference is that you just need to change the EV, RV, the number of the gradient and uh, the number of the gradient and the y in the set, then and the unit. So accordingly by using the context of the question. Alright, so that's the idea. So I hope that you can understand that. Okay, so now we will move on to the final example and uh, that's really the end of the lesson. Okay. Alright, the last example. So this is a question that normally it will be in this way in your real exam and so on. So you can see that the scatter plot is given like half, then you are going to add in some of the missing points. So you need to identify the missing point by yourself, then you add them it. Okay, so I'm going to uh, do all the whole revision on what we have learned so far. So how to describe the scatter plot, the correlation coefficient, find the uh, equation of the least square line. How to interpret the gradient and also the y-intercept then we try to fit the line into the data again okay so uh if let's say you think that you are pretty confident with it so please feel free to try everything out by your own then after that you watch your video for your own uh reference check okay all right so uh let's try to go through a question so the following table shows the result of an experiment that measured the temperature of a liquid at, as it cool down Okay, so that's why uh, when you try to look at this value, so like the temperature of the liquid is actually cooling down. So that's why the temperature is like decreasing when the time is increasing. 
So this data is to use or uh, is to be used to find the mathematical relationship that enable the temperature at a certain time to be predicted. So that's why we are going to use this model to help us to predict if let's say now I try to leave the liquid up to the time where it's 45 minutes, then what's the temperature? So that's like the idea of it. But uh, for today's session, we are not talking about the part of prediction yet. So it's basically just fitting the data, uh, fitting the model to the data only. Okay, so now let's try to look at part A. So add in the missing point to complete the scatter plot. So let's try to look at this scatter plot. So we have this four point. So by looking at the data, which means we need to add in two missing points here. So we have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So 5, so which means one point will be the 10 one, then the other point will be 30. So these are the two points that went missing. Okay, so we need to add in uh, into the scatter plot. So 10 and 78. So 10 is here, 78 will be pretty near to 80. So that's why it can be somewhere here. Okay. Then we move on to the next one. 30 is 41, so it's very near to 40. So 30 is 41, so it's like somewhere here. All right, so that's pretty much for part A. Okay, D describe the scatter plot in terms of the direction and the strength. So when you try to look at this, basically they are pretty close to each other, right? If you were to draw a line. So that's why for part B. Okay, so let's try to uh, describe it. So it's uh, strong. Okay, so for this part, you can see that as the time increases, the temperature decreases, am I right? So when your x increase, your y decrease. So that's why it's negative, a strong negative linear relationship. Okay, a strong and negative, a strong and negative linear relationship. So that's basically the answer for part B. Okay, part C. So the question one is to find out the correlation coefficient correct to two, three decimal places and interpret this value. So it means we need to use our calculator to help us to do that. Okay. So yeah, remember, take your calculator, then after that, do it together here. Okay. So let's try to put in the data. So you remember how to switch over. Yeah. So control, then just go back. Okay, if let's say you think that's too much of the data here, then you just want to open a new one, then feel free to do so. Okay, so which means you just uh, go back, then after that, just control, then dot. Okay, then you just add your new uh, list and spreadsheet. Okay, then you go to a new page. If let's say you want to just open a new dot, then you just press dot, lock, then file, then you just open a new document. Okay, you get what I mean, right? Because if let's say you are using a new page, right? That which means later when you want to plot your scatter plot and so on, then uh, the thing that will come out here will be a lot more because you try to add in, you will see all these things in your new page as well. So if you think that's pretty annoying and you don't want that, then you just uh, open a new dot. Okay, so you just press dot, file, so number one, then new document. So a question will just ask you whether you want to save this document or not. So it depends on you. Lah. If let's say you want to have it for your reference, then just save it. If you don't want, then you just press no. Okay, then after that, it will actually uh, show you back to the page where when you just uh, switch on your calculator, then we just add in again at least and spreadsheet. Okay, so let's try to put that in. So we have time, temperature. Okay, so yeah. If you don't want to write in the full name, so please remember that what's the value that you try, to, what's the variable that you assign. So 5 and 87, and then 10 and 78, 15 and 69. All right, then after that, we have 20 and 56, 25 and 53. 30 and 41. Okay, so only six values. So make sure that you check again before you move on. So 20, 56, and then, uh, okay, all okay. good. All right, so now let's try to do the analysis. So I think it will be good because later we need the correlation coefficient and we need the equation, right? So we use the linear regression here. So just go to the menu. Okay, statistic, stat calculation, linear regression. 
All right, so for my, what's my EV in this question is the time, right? Then the RV is the temperature. So I'm just going to show it in the column D. So same thing, if you want to do E or C also can, since we doesn't learn a residual plot yet. Okay, so yeah, what you can see here is we have pretty covered the part here. So we are going to talk about R square in next lesson together with the prediction. Then after that, a residual plot in next week. Okay, so now let's try to look at the value here and try to copy down the number that we have. Okay, so the question is asking for your R, right? So part three, find the correlation coefficient correct to three decimal place. So that's why you can see the full value at the bottom here, yeah? So just to make sure if let's say you can't read the whole thing. So this is how you get all the value. So it's negative 0 0.99336 and so on. So uh, to three decimal places. So that's why it's negative 0 0.993. Okay, so R, sorry for that. So R is equal to negative 0 0.993. Okay, so interpret this value. Do you still remember that? Yeah, so this is like a very strong one. So it's actually, uh, I mean, relating or aligned to what you have written in part B. So this is a strong negative relationship. Okay, strong negative linear relationship. So now we look at uh, part D. So same thing, we have pressed this in our calculator. So writing the coefficient correct to one decimal places. So that's why I just change it to 1 dp. So the end that we have is negative 1.8 then 95.8 for B. So Y equal to negative 1.18, right? Sorry for that. Uh, yeah, sorry, it's negative 1.8, one decimal place, x then plus 95.8. Okay, so after you get this value, right, you can always uh, check with your diagram whether it's aligned or not. Like in this case, your relationship is negative. So that's why you should get a negative gradient. Then after that, you can imagine when you try to draw the line, right, the intersection point is actually somewhere here. So that's why it's having a y intercept as 95.8, which is a correct one. Okay, so that's the idea of how do you check your answer. So that's pretty much of it. Then remember to change it. So since it's given that uh, temp uh, time can be represented by T, can put temperature by T and P, then we just change it here. So our Y, which is our response variable, is the temperature equal to negative 1.8, the capital T plus 95.8. Okay, so that's the answer for part D. So now let's move on to E. So the question one is to interpret the slope and the y in the set of regression line. Okay, so you can with your reference of your handout that uh, what we did previously in the notes, then we are going to write it down. Okay, so you still remember for the gradient part, it's going to be like one for every unit increase in the explanatory variable, the response variable increases or decreases by how many units, right? So that's why the same thing, I'm just going to write that for every one unit. Okay, so in this case, what's the unit for your explanatory variable? It's minute, am I right? So for every one minute increase, Okay, in the, what is our explanatory variable? Is our time, right? In the time. Okay, the response variable, what's our response variable? Is the temperature. So the temperature, so you can see that the gradient is negative, right? So that's why it's decreasing. The temperature decreases by how many units? So in this case, the gradient here is 1.8. So make sure that you do not, not write the negative anymore. The negative here indicates that you need to write decreases. But when you write how many units, you doesn't need to put in the negative. So decreases by 1.8. So the unit for temperature is degrees Celsius. Okay, so that's the idea of how do you answer it according to the context of the question. So you are going to change the unit 
So depending on your EV or your RV, then after that, you're going to change your EV and RV to the exact variable that you have. In example here, the explanatory variable is time, the uh, response variable is temperature. So for every one minute increase in the time, the temperature decreases by 1.8 degrees Celsius. Okay, then 1.8 is how you get from the slope. So now secondly, is interpret the y-intercept, right? Oh, just to tell you here, the slope is basically the same thing when we talk about a gradient. Yeah, because you can imagine slope like it's like a steep plane, right? So that's why it's like a slanted plane. So uh, a slope and a gradient basically means like how steep the line is. So they are just the same thing. Okay, so the y-intercept, yeah, so by looking at your notes, we know that to interpret y-intercept is that when the explanatory variable is zero unit, the response variable is c units, right? So which means in this case, when the explanatory variable is time, right? When the time is zero unit, oh, yeah, so the unit here is minute. So when the time is zero minute, so, which means in this case, right, you can always write down that if, let's say, the time is zero minute, it actually means that when the experiment start, am I right? So, uh, when the experiment start, it's basically the same thing. But this is like the more general way to write it up because uh, it's not every time that you're going to have the time equals to zero minute. If let's say you have other units, then you need to write down like what is the uh, explanatory variable that according to the unit as well. Or uh, in this case, it's the time is zero minute, so which means it's the when the explanatory, uh, experiment starts. Okay, so then we need to continue with what's the response variable, right? So the temperature. So it's good that we write in full. Yeah, I'm sorry that in this part I didn't put in as well, but uh, to be more exact, so the temperature of the liquid is how much? The intercept, right? So 95.8 degrees Celsius. Okay, and that's correct because you can imagine if let's say the time is zero, then we predict that uh, the line of best fit later is going to touch the y axis at this point, which is roughly 90 something. So that's why when the time is zero minute, the temperature of liquid is 95.8 unit or 95.8 degrees Celsius. Okay, so I hope that you can get the idea how do you interpret the slope and then the y-intercept. Okay, so now we can move on to the last question already. Please uh, fit the least square line to the data. So similarly, let's try to reduce any point that you like. So we'll try to do zero and then maybe one for 20 and one for 40, and that's much more easier. So time is equals to zero. So the temperature. So like what I say, uh, it doesn't matter what's the value of T that you put in. So as long as you are substituting into the right equation, at the end, you are still getting the same equation like mine. So substitute zero plus 95.8. Yeah, for this part, actually, without calculation, and you should know it should be 95.8 because this is the y-intercept. So when t equals to 20, let's try to find the temperature by substituting. Okay, so by using our calculator, negative 1.820 and then plus 95.8, so we can get 59.8 which is roughly 60. Lah. Then we do one more maybe when t is 40. Negative 1.8 substitute 40 plus 95.8 equals to 1. Okay, so you must remember how to sub this. Uh, uh, I mean, we are just going to use the same idea when we talk about uh, prediction in the next, next lesson, 23.8. Okay, so now we can try to plot all this value. So when t equals to zero, the temperature is 95. So we can't exactly see 95, but it will be roughly, this is 90, so 95 is roughly here. Lah. Okay, oh, sorry. We can try to draw a cross as well. So to indicate the difference with the line of best fit and the line that, uh, and the data point that we have here. Then the second one, t is 20, then temperature is 60. T is 20, the temperature is around 60, so it's somewhere here. 
Okay, so you can see there's a difference. Uh, so it doesn't mean that you will definitely pass through this point one. Then after that, the last one, T is 40, then temperature is 23.8. 23.8, then it's somewhere here. Okay, so now similarly, let's try to use a straight line to connect all the points together. Okay, so this is a straight line that we will get. So same thing, we can try to use our calculator to help us to see whether this uh, graph is correct one or not. So uh, your calculator, so similarly, let's go to uh, open the new page. Okay, then add in data and statistics. So this one's supposed to be our time, right? Then our RV is the temperature. Okay, then you should be able to get the scatter plot. Then after that, uh, let's try to add in the point that we have. So, oops, I'm sorry. Analyze then regression, show regression line. Okay, so this is a part that you can try to check on your y equals mx plus as well. Okay, so that's correct. Then when you try to look at the graph, right? So this is the two point that is a little bit further. So you can see the three points here. Let me try to see whether I can move this a little bit towards the right hand side or not. So I'm sorry, I can't do that, but yeah. Okay, let me try to show it. Okay, so from here, then you can definitely see that. Yeah, this is a point. So it's roughly in the middle for the first three points. One, two, three. Then after that, when you move on, then there's a point that is lower and higher than going a little bit lower. So this is either further here, then it's going a bit lower. Okay, so this line is an appropriate one compared to the scatter plot that we got in our calculator. All right, so I hope that you can understand the whole idea here. Then for the next week, we are going to look at how do we make prediction by using the uh, linear regression equation that we get. And we are going to look at the part for coefficient of determination as well. Then after that, maybe one more week, then we are able to actually complete this topic already. Okay, so that's pretty much for the lesson today. So if let's say you have any problem, just feel free to approach me personally. So the idea is that remember to go through your notes and understand that. So basically all your interpretation that we put here is just based on the handout notes only. So what is changed is that you are going to change the unit accordingly. You are going to change the explanatory variable and the response variable accordingly and also the gradient and the y-intercept. Okay, so that's pretty much for today's lesson. Spend some time to understand it, then after that to do your homework. All right, so yeah, see you in the next lesson. Thank you.